Hello ladies and gentlemen. So now we're going to perf be performing this division. Okay, we're going to divide this polynomial x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. We're going to divide it by the linear polynomial x minus 1. So let's do that. Okay, the first thing we need to know is that because we're dividing by x minus 1, we're going to put a 1 on the outside of the house like this. We're then going to put our big huge uh, synthetic division house and we can see in this case that there are no missing powers of x in this polynomial. So we can just list out the coefficients. What's the coefficient of x cubed? That's just going to be 1 in this case. What's the coefficient of the x squared term? It's going to be a 6. What's the coefficient of the x term? That's an 11. What's the uh, and of course the constant term here is 6. Okay. So now let us perform this division. Okay. So we're going to first drop down the 1, okay? And that's going to give us a 1 here. We now ask the question, what is 1 times 1? That's, of course, 1. We place the result of that multiplication here. And then, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to add these two numbers, okay? What is 6 plus 1? That's going to be 7, okay? So we place that result here. Then we ask the question, what is 1 times 7? That's 7. We're going to place that value here, okay? Then we're going to, again, add these terms like this. We're going to add them. What's 11 plus 7? That's 18, actually, believe it or not. Then we ask ourselves, what is 1 times 18? That's 18, of course. We place that result here. And then we're going to add these, okay, like this. We're going to add, okay? We ask ourselves, what is 6 plus 18? 6 plus 18 is 24. Look at this. What does this tell us? This is one of the, this is the first example we're looking at where we're dividing this polynomial by that polynomial and we have a remainder of 24. Okay, this is our remainder. Okay. So now let us first interpret it using the remainder theorem. So we know that the remainder theorem says the following. It says that if f of x is a polynomial and has remainder r when divided by x minus k, then f of k is equal to r. Okay. So here we have the polynomial x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6 being divided by x minus 1 and having a remainder of 24. So therefore, if we want to couch it in terms of the remainder theorem, we have f of x equals to x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6 being divided by x minus 1 and having remainder 24. Okay? So here we see our k is going to be 1 because if you look at x minus 1 and x minus k, you can see that the k would have to equal to 1. So, by the remainder theorem, f of 1 is equal to 24, okay? Now, of course, as you might as you noticed when we were doing this synthetic division calculation, you can see it's very pleasant. All we had to do here was literally just multiply and add, right? And of course, look, I'll admit to you that in the examples we've seen so far, all the numbers have been injured have been integers so it's been very nice to multiply them and to add them there has been no complications however it is true that if there were fractions involved it may be a little bit more complicated but all in all it's been quite straightforward right but so what i want you to observe is that by using the remainder theorem and the synthetic division we were able to evaluate the function at a particular uh, value of x in this case uh, uh, the value um, one Let's see what would happen if we would have evaluated it directly. 1 plus 6 would have been 7, plus 11 would have been 18, plus 6 would give us 24. So in fact, we would have gotten that answer. And of course, in this case, it was very easy because all of these are, uh, if you take x cubed and you let x equal 1, it's 1. If you let x squared be, if you let x be 1, then x squared is 1, and so 6 times 1 is 6. So you can see that it would come out just the way I did it there. And of course, but of course, uh, in general, 
it might not be so simple to evaluate the function directly. And so having the consequence as a remainder theorem will be a, a great benefit for us in those cases. Now I want to go back to um, now I want to go back to um, the other interpretation of this, the division interpretation. What is the implication that it has a remainder of 24? Well, what it will be is just what we would expect it to be. That is to say, this division problem will yield for us, let me get rid of this temporarily, Remember, we're, we're dividing a, a cubic term by a linear term. So the so this will correspond to a square term, okay? So it's going to be 1x squared, in other words, x squared, plus 7x, plus 18, plus 24 divided by x minus 1. And just for kicks, we're going to verify this by doing it with long division um, as a double check, okay? Now, alternatively, we could also multiply it by x minus 1, but we're just going to use this opportunity to practice long division one more time. Well, to practice long division one more time, uh, to make to make this uh, statement uh, correspond to that familiar situation of long division, but of course we're not gonna see long we're not gonna see the end of long division. Um, of course, I'm joking, okay? But the reality is that I love to do long division um, when I'm doing algebra because I just feel it's more intuitive and stuff, okay? And so, but in any case, I know that we're more familiar with 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 the like with we're we're more familiar with a statement like this coming from long division, uh, with our experience with numbers. And so, I'm going to perform this division using the long division, again to reinforce those ideas of the long division that we learned in the last section, but also to verify this in that familiar context. So I'm going to put the x minus one on the outside of the house, and I'm going to put this polynomial on the inside of the house. So x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. Okay? Okay. So I ask myself, how many times does x go into x cubed? It goes in x squared times. Because x squared times x gives me x cubed. Now, what is x squared times negative 1? That's minus x squared. Okay? So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform my subtraction. I ask myself, what is x cubed minus x cubed? That's gone. What is 6x squared minus negative x squared? Aha! 6x squared minus negative x squared is 6x squared plus x squared. So this becomes 7x squared. I bring down my plus 11x. And I ask myself, how many times does x go into 7x squared? 7x times, because 7x times x will get 7x squared. So plus 7x, okay? 7x times x, that's 7x squared. 7x times negative 1 is negative 7x. So now the question becomes, what is 7x squared minus 7x squared? That's gone. Boop! What is 11x minus negative 7x? That becomes 11x plus 7x. What is that? 18x. Then I bring down my plus 6. So now I ask myself, what times x gives me 18x? Plus 18. 18 times x is 18x. OK. 18 times negative 1 is negative 18. So now I perform the subtraction. What is 18x minus 18x? Of course, that's 0. What is 6 minus negative 18? That will become 6 plus 18. What is 6 plus 18? It's 24. And so we recall from our previous scenario that this would exactly, cor that this division, uh, this long division would correspond exactly to this 
cubic polynomial divided by this linear polynomial will give you this fact, this um, quotient, and plus the 24 divided by the x minus 1, just as we interpreted this synthetic division result. Okay, so now we know how to interpret a synthetic division result um, that does not have a zero remainder. Okay. And now, I hope you've enjoyed this example, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much.